Hey everyone, it's Mr. Kabbalah. Uh, we're going to do Algebra 1 homework uh, from EMath Instruction. Uh, this is unit number 8, lesson number 2. It's called uh, More Work with Parabolas. So hopefully these are help. Hopefully everyone's doing alright. Uh, so if you want to work along with me or just check your work, that's great. Alright, so this is lesson number 2. It says More Work with Parabolas. Uh, so number one, which of the following could be the equation of the quadratic shown below? Explain your reasoning. Uh, so one thing that in the lesson they taught is that if the lead coefficient is negative, then it's going to open downwards, they say. If it's positive, it's going to open upwards. So this is a downward opening parabola. So we can eliminate two and four because the lead coefficient is positive. Uh, the next thing we could look at is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is this last number here. So in uh, number one, choice one, the y-intercept is negative five, which would actually be down here. So, and then this is positive 11, so that would be up here. So I would say that the best answer is number three. It has a negative le leading coefficient and a positive y-intercept. Number two, based on the quadratic function shown in the table below, which of the following is the range of this function? So I might sketch this out. All right, so here's an x and y axis. x, y. All right, so uh, we've got negative 1, 3. So something like that. 0, 9, like right there. 1, 11. 2, 9, 3, 3, 4, negative 7. So to me, it looks something like that. All right, so the range, now we have domain and range. Domain goes left and right. It's the x values. And then range goes up and down. So range. Range are the y values. So this actually has a maximum the maximum is at 11, so the y values can be 11 or less. So 11 or less, and how do we say that? Um, that would be anything that is less than or equal to 11, so it's got to be number 4. Alright, um, for problems 3 through 5, we're going to use tables on our calculator. So which of the following quadratics will have a maximum value of x equals 3? So quick sketch, all right, so maximum. Uh, we have parabolas that open downward like that, and we have parabolas that open upward like that. If they open down, they actually have a maximum. If they open up, they have a minimum. So this is a minimum, this is a maximum. So we're looking for maximum. So that means we can get rid of anything that would open upward, which we can tell by the lead coefficient. So we don't need to look at one, we don't need to look at four. So what we're going to do now is I'm only going to start with number 2. All right, I'm going to go to my uh, y equals. i got to clear some things out here. All right, and I'm going to type in negative 4x squared plus 24x minus 21. And I'm going to look at the table. And what I'm looking for is a maximum value at x equals 3. So let's see. So this is the x column. Uh, so here, 3 is 15, and then if we look to the left and right of it, or up and above it and below it, it's 11. All right, and then it goes even down from 11 to negative 1, negative 1, negative 21, negative 49. So it looks like uh, when x is 3, y is 15, um, could be a maximum. Now we could go to uh, type in, let's just see what the next one looks like negative 2x squared um, plus 20x minus 49 and let's just check to see what x equals 3 so he, and when x is 3 y is negative 7 but then again we're looking for a maximum it looks like the maximum might be over here when x is 5 so it's not going to be number 3 it's got to be number 2 Uh, number four, we want a minimum value of negative five at x equals seven. 
So for a minimum, we are going to have no negative in the lead coefficient. So we can eliminate choices two and four. Okay, and we're gonna go, I'm gonna clear this out. Let's type in the first choice, x squared uh, minus 14x plus 39. And we are looking for a minimum of negative five when x is seven. So here's x seven, it's negative 10. That's not what we're looking for. Now we could probably assume that it's number three, but just to kind of double check here, we got x squared, now this is plus 44. So again, let's just look at, you know, when x is seven is the minimum negative five, yep. Okay, and you can kind of see it goes up um, as you go around that negative five. Okay, so it's number three. All right, the parabola y equals negative x squared plus 12x minus 11 has an axis of symmetry at x equals 6. Which of the following represents its range? So what we know about this is that um, x equals 6 is a straight up and down line because every value on that line has an x value of 6. So that would be 6, let's say, negative 4. Up here would be, let's say, 6 comma 5. Down here would be 6 comma negative 10. Every point on that line would have an x value of 6. That's why it's called x equals 6. Um, now, we also know that this would cross the y-axis at negative 11. So, so let's say someplace down here. Um, and it would open up down because it has a leading negative coefficient. So something, let's just say like this. Um, and we're looking for uh, which of the following represents its range. So let's take a look at the table. So we have negative x squared. Here, let me clear that out. Negative x squared plus 12x minus 11. Let's look at the table. We're going to go to where x equals 6, and that means that when x is 6, so it is, you know, I might, this was just a sketch, remember, so this would be 6, 25. So the range, again, is how far up and down can it go? Well, it can go as low as possible. It can go to negative infinity, um, but the highest it can go in terms of a y value is 25. So we're looking for 25 or less. So what, in, which inequality is that? It would be number two. Y is less than or equal to 25. All right, on the back, on the next page for me. All right, the height of an object that is traveling through the air can be well modeled by a quadratic function that opens downward. An object is fired upward and its height in feet above the ground is given by h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 80. t is the time in seconds, and the object has been in the, uh, that the object has been in the air. h of t is the height. So we're gonna sketch this, uh, clear this out, negative 16. Calculator doesn't have t, so I'm still gonna use x squared plus 64 t. It does have a t, but not for a variable, but anyway. Right, now, I'm not gonna use any time that comes before zero because that would be negative, time, time, time. So, 0, 80 is where it starts. And then one, one, uh, one second is 128 feet. So there's 100, so just a tad below that line. Uh, after two seconds, at, it's at 144. There's 120, 130, 140, so about right there. Then it goes back down to 128 after three seconds. Uh, four seconds would be 80. And then at five seconds, zero feet. And we're not gonna go past that because we're talking about throwing or shooting. What are we doing here? We're just uh, traveling through the air and basically once it gets down to zero feet, basically hits the ground and probably bounces or does something like that. So we're not gonna go past five seconds. Um, 
So letter B, what is the maximum height in feet? Well, the maximum would be right up here, which I think we said was 144 feet. At what time does it hit the ground? So it's in the air, in the air, in the air, boom, hits the ground right here at five seconds. Over what interval is its height increasing? So it's increasing up, 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 up until it gets to here. So from zero seconds to two seconds, that height is increasing. So zero to two seconds. Uh, you could probably also put zero less than or equal to x, less than or equal to two, if you wanted to do it in like an interval notation. I would just accept zero to two seconds, but anyway. All right, the cost per computer produced at a factory depends on how many computers the factory produces in a day. The cost function is modeled by C of n equals 1 500th n squared minus n plus 200, where n is the number of computers produced in a day. And C of n is the unit cost in dollars per computer. So we're going to do C of 50 and give an interpretation of your answer in terms of the scenario described. So basically this is asking us to replace the n with 50. So I am going to store 50 for x because again, we don't have any other variable other than x on our calculator. So we're going to use x instead of n. But I'm going to store 50 and then I'm going to type in this part of the equation. Um, I like using fractions, but you don't have to. You could just do 1 divided by 500. Oop, not 5,000. Uh, 1 500th x squared minus x plus 200. 155. So what that means is that to produce 50 computers, it will cost... $155. All right, letter B. Does the cost have a maximum or minimum value? Explain. Use your calculator. So I think that's going to mean, let's type that into y equals. So uh, not C of n, but we're going to do y equals 1 500th uh, x squared minus x plus 200. Um, let's look at the table just to kind of see what's going on here. So, 0, 200, let's find another. These are all fractions. Let's see if there's another whole number someplace. So, here's 20 computers. Alright, let's take a look at the graph then. If it doesn't show up on here, we're going to have to change the, the zoom. So let's do zoom, let's try zoom fit, which I think is zoom zero. Even that might not be the greatest. Yeah, it's not showing up. Um, what I might say for this one, does the cost have a minimum or a maximum? I would have to say that it has a minimum because this is a positive leading coefficient. So even without seeing it on the calculator, that means the graph is going to open upward something like this. So when it opens upward, it has a minimum. Um, so that's, you know, uh, it has a positive leading coefficient, which means it opens up which means it has a minimum value or something like that and then based on this can it have any real zeros explain your thought process so you got to think this is talking about making computers um, and it's talking about what if you made zero computers? Would it cost you any money? Now, mathematically, according to the equation, yes, it would. Uh, if you substitute in zero in place of n, it would cost you $200 to produce zero computers. But in real life, I don't think that's what would happen. Um, if you didn't produce any computers, you might not be, you might not have a cost per computer. So that's something I'd write maybe there. Um, so in any case, 
hopefully this was a help. Um, hopefully everyone's doing all right.